Well, good day, everyone. Russ Barkley here with a brief comment on a research paper that made the news this morning, at least in my news feed anyway. Uh, and this is with regard to a paper that was just published in the journal Frontiers in Psychiatry uh, by a research group from the Netherlands. And it is about the use of microdosing of psychedelics to improve ADHD. So it sounds very interesting, obviously very cutting edge. There's a lot going on out there in uh, the general population with people wanting to try psychedelics for the management of certain mental health conditions and other even medical conditions. Uh, there is also a growing interest in the adult ADHD community on whether or not small doses, micro doses of psychedelics might be helpful to them. Uh, so this paper uh, strikes a chord, I think, within the current pop culture surrounding adult ADHD. So let's take a look at this because the headline for this article when it was summarized by a journalist was that microdosing of psychedelics might help adults with ADHD. Unfortunately, the paper that they were referring to, this one, uh, did not actually assess ADHD and report the findings in this particular paper. Now, hold that thought because they did publish a study a year ago in which they do report some findings concerning uh, ADHD symptoms. But uh, let's just take a quick look. This is a online survey that was done uh, assessing people with either a diagnosis of ADHD in adulthood or high levels of ADHD symptoms. And these adults expressed an intention to begin or to continue using microdoses of psychedelics over the next four weeks. And they were recruited into this study and asked to complete surveys at the end, uh, well, at the beginning of the study, two weeks in and four weeks in. In this particular paper, they report the results of a personality inventory and whether or not microdosing improved certain dimensions of these personality traits, including conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, openness, uh, and neuroticism. They also assessed, using a separate scale, the individual's uh, state of mindfulness. That is how mindful they were during, uh, during the day. Uh, so uh, it's an interesting paper only in the sense that it sort of goes out and surveys people who intend to use these things obviously monitors them over the course of the study at baseline two weeks and four weeks as to whether they did take microdoses or not, ask them to complete these assessments of personality uh, and mindfulness, and then reports the results. Um, so, you know, kind of, uh, kind of an interesting paper. The problem here is that it's not a research study. It's a survey. Uh, it's a survey of people out there anonymously who intended to use microdoses, uh, and who perhaps did use them. But there's no way of verifying that. Uh, so what's, what's wrong with this report? Well, before I tell you that, let's just say that they didn't find any improvements on any of the personality measures, uh, but they did find that microdosing did improve people's reports of mindfulness. So as it says here, trait mindfulness specifically description and non-judging of inner experience, was increased during the period from baseline to two weeks to four weeks. Uh, so that's what we have. It does say that neuroticism was decreased by the fourth week, uh, but it wasn't a particularly impressive uh, reduction. Uh, nor, by the way, was the improvement in mindfulness, although it was statistically significant. So back to my, my point. What, what's wrong with this paper? First of all, it does not involve actually assessing people in a clinical or research situation, that is directly evaluating them personally. So we're going to take their word for it on their diagnosis and on their symptoms. Second, it's not a randomized trial. They didn't take half of the group and randomize them to get the microdoses and another half to either get no treatment or some other alternative treatment or hopefully a placebo 
uh, instead of the microdosing. It did not involve blindedness because there was no randomization and no placebo, so there was nothing to, uh, to blind about, that is to keep people from knowing what treatment they were getting. Uh, in addition, uh, it lost a huge part of its sample. About 80% of the sample did not finish the survey by the fourth week. So you can see here it started out with 233 adults. By week two, it only had 66 who were completing the surveys. And by week four, only 44. Well, that's a horrible retention rate for any survey or any uh, scientific paper if you hope to draw any reliable or robust conclusions about what it is that you're studying. Uh, so for that reason alone, these results are seriously questionable. Uh, we also know that when you ask people at time one to fill out ratings of ADHD or other symptoms, in this case, personality items, and then you assess them again at week two and week four, people usually get better. There's usually a downward trend or an improvement in rating scales across time. And that's why you need a control group that goes through the same procedures but doesn't get the treatment so that you can evaluate the differences between the two groups accounting for this sort of a practice effect or exposure or experience effect uh, the surveys. And of course, this study didn't do that either. So contrary to the headline that announced the publication of this study, we really don't know whether microdosing of psychedelics helps adults with ADHD and helps them with their mindfulness and perhaps their neuroticism in their personality. Certainly, this is not a study that can answer that because there's just no controls in this study for all of the possible confounding factors that could enter into this kind of a pre-test, post-test type of experimental design, which is one of the weakest experimental designs that you can use. In addition, as I said, the failure to retain most of the sample over time would introduce profound biases in the participants that remained within the study and completed it out at four weeks. Nor do we have any way of knowing whether these people actually took their microdoses. They said they did, but that's about all we know. Um, after I read this, I thought, well, why didn't you report your symptoms of ADHD in the study? They collected them. Why didn't they talk about that? And it's because they had published a study a year earlier here it is, over in Neuroscience Applied, same authors, same survey, same subjects. In this case, they're reporting the results for their ADHD ratings and for uh, a measure of self-report of well-being. And then they also gave them a short test of time perception. Uh, to see if that improved. As you know, uh, sense of time in ADHD is disrupted, uh, and so that's why they might want to assess that. What did they find here? They report that there were significant improvements in ADHD symptoms, as well as in reported well-being, but there was no change on the test of time perception. Uh, it's the same sample, same problems, with the study. So I'm not going to go into it in any detail, but here they're claiming that there may have been an effect on ADHD symptoms. Again, we know that those symptom ratings improve with time, even if you don't do any intervention and you just assess people two or three times, the ratings tend to go down somewhat as a result of experience with the rating scale and, and other factors. Uh, to the author's credit, they do say that, look, this is just a survey and we need to do more research using placebo-controlled designs to see whether there is some beneficial effect on ADHD. But of course, the journalists don't pick up on all of these nuances and niceties and clarifications and limitations of these studies. They just blast a headline out there that microdosing of psychedelics might help people with ADHD. Well, I think the answer to that is we don't know. There's very little research other than these two studies. There's a lot of people reporting that they're using microdosing of psychedelics. Uh, they're using them for anxiety, for depression, for PTSD, uh, for other reasons as well. Uh, some using it for ADHD. But that's just going on out there in the popular culture. The answer to the research question is, does it work? 
we don't know. I'm very suspicious about psychedelics for ADHD because I think that they would impact the wrong uh, neurotransmitters uh, and the wrong networks in the brain uh, rather than improving executive functioning and self-regulation. But that's just my own suspicion. We just don't know. So take the headlines with a grain of salt this week. Uh, we simply don't know if this works or not. Uh, don't get too excited about it. Hopefully in due time, we'll get some better studies using placebos to see whether this is really helpful for ADHD or not. Time will tell. Thanks for joining me for this breaking news update. Uh, I'll see you at the next video. Uh, again, please subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Have a look at my books uh, over on my website or on the homepage of my YouTube channel if you're interested in my trade books. Uh, and if you know someone who might benefit from the material, as always, please recommend my channel to them. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Have a good day. Be well. Bye now.